Hello, welcome. In this video, I'm going to take you through how to set up a spreadsheet that finds the future value for two different individuals. In this case, Sydney and Benny. It finds what their balances will be in the future. That's the future value. If we make these assumptions over here, and these assumptions can change. So we're assuming that Sydney puts $100 in the bank 12 times a year and that that interest is compounded 12 times a year. So we can calculate over time how much money Sydney will have in the bank. And for Benny, it's the same thing, but with $80. These are their interest rates for Sydney and Benny. These are the number of times we're compounding their money. And down here, these are the time intervals that were given 10 and 20 years for Sydney and Benny. So you can see right away, and there's some, I'll explain this section in a moment, but up here, these are the answers, right? For Sydney, after time one, here's time one, 10 years, if Sydney puts $100 in the bank each, each month, and that money is growing at a 5% interest rate, have, Sydney will have this much money at the end of those 10 years, and will have this much money at the end of 20 years, whereas Benny will have a lesser amount in the beginning, they're putting down less money, but the interest rate is higher, and it turns out that after 20 years, Benny will have more in the bank. So this calculates uh, those future values based on these assumptions over here. I'll show you how to do that. And these formulas over here are what I entered in these cells. So for example, to find the 41,000, this is the exact formula I typed in. Um, down here, this is a template we made in our class for a specific problem. So these are the answers to those parts of the question. Your spreadsheet, if you're in my class and doing this spreadsheet, your spreadsheet should show those answers very clearly. And there are some formulas in here directly that I put on the side. So you can type in the word Sydney for part C. That's the answer. They're asking who has more money after 10 years at Sydney. But there's a formula which we can write out that looks at these two numbers. And what this formula does is it says if B2 is greater than B3, then put Sydney. So if Sydney's number is greater, and that's exactly what it does, Sydney's is higher, so put Sydney, whereas in this case, Benny has more money, and look what this does, it compares D2 and D3, it looks at those two cells, and it says if D2 is greater than D3, in this case it's not, but if it was, you'd put Sydney, otherwise put Benny. So this puts Benny because D2 is not greater than D3, it's the reverse. In G and H, these are formulas that we can write for the future value for, I believe, Sydney, yep, and then Benny, where I left time and periodic investments as variables, but they weren't specific when they asked this question, so you, you can put that in different ways. I asked for a graph, so you should have a link that links to a graph. There's our graph. And then J, they're just asking, what does the graph tell you? I, just for fun, I put that in a separate spreadsheet. And I just said the graph shows that the higher interest rate will pass the other after about 14 years. So the goal of this video is to teach you how to set this up. In this spreadsheet right here, this is how we're making the graph. And then here's the graph. And then finally, a sheet with your text on it. So we're going to do this step by step. Don't worry. Let's go to File. Let's make a copy of this. OK. Boom. So now it's loading. I'm going to delete some stuff and then show you how I'd work through this. Okay, so the first thing, I'm, I'm going to leave these given. So what you should do, I'm going to just delete these things here. And my formulas might change slightly. Let me at least leave up the guidelines, actually. I don't want to change it on you. There's some variation that we could have. All right, so what you should do, you should pause the video. Basically, everything you see here, I'm going to delete these two things. Everything you see here, you should type out. As for the links itself, what you'll do is, you know, delete this. You type out the word link. Well, I'll get to that later. Leave the word link out of it for now. So type out everything other than these two things here. Pause the video, do that, and then here I'll put the grids back on so you can see. So type everything out and then resume the video and I'll show you what to do next. Okay. So at this point, you should have this piece typed out, the table, do some color coding. You can format text. Remember, if you have overlap on text, just click on a cell and make sure you click wrapping text, which is the middle thing right here. So if, you, if any of the text is overlapping, you don't like it, you can do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to explain this formula. So for Sydney, future value of time one, we're going to do 
as it says right here, F5. I'm just going to click on F5 so you can see that's the periodic investment times 1 plus. The formula says to do your rate, so I'm going to click on the rate, divided by the number of times we're compounding it to the power of n times t. So I did, here's, I did t times n, it looks like. I did f14 first in my formula. So t times n, same thing as n times t. Close parentheses. And then what do we do is we subtract, I want to minus, and I want to click on the periodic investment. Now this is all of my numerator, and then I want to take that and divide it by r over n. So I'm just going to click on r. That's my rate for Sydney. Divide it by n. Close it, and there we go. All right now, down here you notice it, it all automatically grabbed that number. So let me show you what I have there. I wrote here just b2 essentially, so equals b2. I'm not typing the number down. I'm saying look at b2 and write down whatever numbers in there. And that's nice because then if I change this to 200, for example, it changes this answer and this one as well. It's dynamic. Now I'm going to repeat that process for Benny. And then again for Sydney and Benny for the 20 years. So what I encourage you to do is pause the video, look at these formulas, try it out on your own. Because what I'm going to do right now is just to copy and paste them in. All right, so here I go to copy and paste. It's just following the same formula. Copy, paste, and delete those little apostrophes in the front, commas in the front. Paste. And you can see down here it's populating as I go. This answer right here, that's just referring to B3. So I'll type that in so you can see it. This answer is typing referring to D2. D2. This answer is referring to D3. So once you have all this set up, um, you know they want to know who's got more money. That's where these come in. You can see that obviously A is bigger than B, but if I change some of these rates, I can switch that around. For example, if I give Sydney a 9%, well, if I give Benny a 9%, let's see what happens there. Uh, close, let's see, let's give him 10. So if I give him 10%, it's, it's the answer changes from Sydney having more to Benny having more. So this should change accordingly. So this says if B2 is greater than B3, pick Sydney. Otherwise, pick Benny. This the comma separates what to do if it's not true. So here I'm going to put that in. Delete this. Boom. And I'm going to bold that and I'm going to center everything here. That looks terrible. <laughs> Let me fix that. I'm going to center this one. Looks better. And this does the same thing. It looks at the other two cells, D2 and D3, and compares them. So I'm going to delete that. There you go. You got Benny. I'm going to bold it and center it. Now this that's, that's it. So I'm going to pause the video here, copy down what you need to, and then we'll go from there. All right, so I have other sheets already created, right? But you're going to be creating this from scratch. So what you're going to do is press the plus button, and what will happen is it will generate a new sheet just like this. So go ahead, and press the plus button, make a new sheet, and then press play when you're ready to move on. Okay, so I'm, this is sheet two. So don't be overwhelmed by all this. I know there's a lot to look at right here. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to, actually, I'm going to delete basically these formulas. Just leave them out. So you don't need zero or one years. We're going to start our analysis at two years because this formula really starts to work well after a year or so. So we're going to start at two years. And as I'm just going to delete all this so I can start with from scratch with you. Okay, I don't need to highlight anything. I'll do that later. All right. So in our case right here, I'm going to delete these two cells. All you have to really do, I want to see the graph for 2 through 50 years. So 2, 3, 4. If I get a couple of numbers down here, select both of them, I can drag it down to 50. 50 years, and that's my first step. So make sure it has 2 through 50, and pause the video, get your headings in here, time, Sydney, leave a space, and then put Benny there. And then press play once you have the times all set up. OK, so you have all the times set up. And I know this formula looks insane. You could copy it down, but I feel like that's not very helpful. I think what, what might be more helpful to you is to understand where it comes from. So let's just delete this and explain. So what we're trying to do is calculate how much money Sydney has, the future value, and Benny has over these years right here. So the years are changing. That's the variable. But we already have all the information set up for them in the first sheet. 
So we want to call to these values because, like I said, if you change, let's say, 100 to 500, you want everything to change here, but also everything to change in your graph. Everything should be connected. That's one of the beauty, beautiful features here. So these are different tabs on the bottom I'm going through right here, different sheets. And you can actually, on sheet 2, call to values in sheet 1, and that's a big concept you're going over here. So in sheet 2, we can call to sheet 1. How do we do it? Well, I didn't type all this out. All I'm doing is clicking. I typed in equals, and now I click on sheet 1. And I want to find the future value based on a periodic investment for Sydney. So I'm going to put parentheses. The first thing I'm going to do is pick Sydney's periodic investment. There it is. I clicked on that. You can see when I click on that cell, what it says is sheet 1 with an exclamation point, F5. So it's calling to sheet 1, and the way you call to a sheet is an exclamation point, and then it calls to a cell, F5. That's Sydney's periodic investment. And what you do with that number is you multiply by 1 plus R over N. So for Sydney, click the rate. Divide it by n, raise it to the power, and all I'm doing is clicking around of n times t. Or let me just, I, what did I do here? I did, I can't see that. I might, in the formula, I might do, it could be n times t or t times n. I'll, I'll stick with what I did in the last example. I did t times n. So t, well, actually, I think I did n times t. Sorry to ramble there. So I'm going to do n times, now your time is actually in sheet 2. It's in cell A3. I'll show you what I mean. A3 right here, A, sorry, A2 is where it is. I'll delete this, A2. So if I type in A2, um, that refers to this time right here. That's going to change. As I drag this down, it's going to call on more years. And then I want to subtract, then I want to subtract the original periodic investment. Right, so I click on that. Okay. Go in there. And finally, I take this whole numerator, this whole expression, and I divide it by r over n. r over n. And now I'm basically done, except when I drag this formula down, I, it's, I don't want it to call the cells below. It's going to keep going below, below, below. And I don't want to do that. All right? So I, I'll show you what I mean. So I have this formula right here, but if I pull it down, we get errors because it's going to keep trying to pull down to refer to the next value below, and there's some empty cells here. It'll be very confusing. So instead, uh, I want to always refer to those cells. I want to lock it. So if I zoom in here, I'll show you what I mean. All I have to do is put dollar signs around all of the references so that it doesn't change as I go along. So you want to scroll through. And the only one I'm not going to put dollar signs around is A2 because I actually want A2 to change. That's my time reference, so I'm not going to mess with that. Dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign. I think that's everything. Boom. All right. So this formula right here, let me just go like this. Might be slightly different. That's why I want to put that in there. Click it and then just drag it down. It's going to be able to, to handle all these calculations. So here is all of the values we need. And then we repeat the process for Benny. Now, for Benny, I'm not going to click it all around for you again, but it's just the same idea. Go here. I just want to delete my little quotation marks. And then for Benny, I just kind of drag this down. And actually, this formula, I might want to adjust it. Let me just go do that. Equals Benny's periodic value. So I'm going to put parentheses, periodic value, times 1 plus R over N for Benny. Benny's rates right here. Just click on it. Divide it by N. Okay, to the power of n times t. So n times t. And t, again, that's in our other table. We don't want to refer to that here. It's in sheet 2. Minus the periodic investment. Got it. There's our whole numerator divided by r over n. So it's going to be Benny's rate now divided by n right here. And we want to put those dollar signs in around the letters. There we go. Okay, dollar signs, everything except around A2. Boom. Now here, okay. 
This one, I'm just going to drag it down and to 50. And I'm going to highlight a couple things here. Um, we should have the same answers as we had before at 10 years. So 14, 6, 3, 5, and 15, 5, 2, 8. We have that right here. And I'm going to check 20. So I'm just checking to see if everything's working out. 41 and 47,000. Yep, that checks out. And then I also think it makes sense to highlight when Benny's account exceeds Sydney's account right here. Those are nice things to highlight. All right, now I want to make a graph. Let's see here. So my graph's already set up. Let's delete that and start over. So to get a graph going, I would click plus and make a new tab. Then I would go to insert and put a chart. So go ahead and do that. Pause the video. Add a new chart. It should look like this. It says no data. Okay. So you have a new tab. You have a chart. Go to chart type. Pick line graph. That's what we want to do. And we want to add our data. So data range. Click on this. Okay. Delete that. Add another range. Nope. In this case, curious. Sometimes it will suggest or figure out what data we want to use. Let's see if I can do this. Uh, it's not figuring it out. Oh well. We want to go to sheet two. So I'm going to click on sheet two. And now I'm going to pick the data range that I want to include. I just clicked, I clicked B, and then I held control or command and then clicked D. Let's see what happens there. And that's it. We've got Sydney and Benny there. And so again, all I did was I went to this spot, data range, deleted it, clicked on sheet two. I just want to create, basically graph these two columns here for Sydney and Benny. So I clicked B, held Control, and then clicked or Command, and then clicked D. This is basically set up. Now what you want to do is do a couple of things. So click on this, go to Edit Chart. I want to give it a title. Go to Customize, Chart Title, and Axis Titles. This is where you can kind of toggle between Chart Title, Horizontal, and Vertical. For Chart Title, maybe something like Sydney and Benny's future value over 50 years and then for your horizontal time in years and then for your vertical future value in dollars All right something like that and I also like to see the points so um, here under our series go to point size two points and then, then you can scroll through and see everything finally click plus make a fourth sheet and then explain in your own words what the graph is telling you, this is what I said, please say something similar or different, but not exactly the same, right? Don't just copy this. What do you think is valuable in the graph? So that's everything. We've got sheet one, two is our data, three is our graph, and four is our text. Make sure you link to the graph, though, and the way you do that, let me show you. I like to type in the word link, link, and then you're, it might not be blue for you, don't worry. Hit control or command K, and then you want to click the button on the bottom and refer to a different part of the spreadsheet. So I'll show you that again. On the bottom here, go to Control Command K. It says Sheets and Named Rages. Click that, and then you know reference whatever you want to. I'm going to click Sheet Four. And you can actually select a range of cells to link to. I'm just going to pick a sheet, and then we're good to go. All right, that's it. Hope that helped.